This is the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. It shows the relationship between the partial pressure of oxygen, or PO2, and the oxygen saturation of the hemoglobin molecule, or as we know and love it in the pre-hospital world, the pulse ox. First, take note of the plateau here. This is why I tell my students that 90% for a pulse ox is the magic number. Yeah, I know EMT school teaches you that mild to moderate hypoxia is like below 96%, blah, blah, blah. But real world, as long as my pulse ox is above 90%, frankly, I don't care what it is. If they're like 91, 92, 93%, I'll give them a little supplemental oxygen, but no reason to get our panties up in a tizzy. The reason I have this attitude is because from 90 to 100%, the change in PO is very minimal. Remember, pulse oximetry is a tool that reflects gas saturation of the hemoglobin molecule. So you can infer the patient's oxygen status. The PO2 is directly measuring the amount of oxygen in the blood. Now, I know I'll make the paramedic school instructors and that respiratory therapist that we all know and love who works at the local hospital and thinks that they are the epicenter of medicine and the CEO of the Mayo Clinic scream. But PO2 wise, from 100% down to 90%, meh. But look at the PO2. If I go from 100% pulse ox down to 90%, the PO2 really doesn't change that much. Not the biggest deal in the world. But look at 90% on the curve. Once you get below 90%, the PO2 starts to precipitously plummet. So while a drop from 99 to 90 isn't a huge deal, a drop from 89 to 80 or a drop from 95 to 82 is a big friggin' deal. Now let's get a little more advanced because you need to know this if you're going to take your critical care tests. It's not that easy. Actually, I shouldn't say it's not that easy. It's just not intuitive and it can be a little complicated and confusing. Abnormal conditions of the body can cause this curve to shift. What the hell does that mean when the curve shifts? It means that how oxygen attaches to and is offloaded from the hemoglobin molecule is going to be altered. So let's look at a right shift. Many disease states are going to cause a right shift. Big time one to know is low pH. Acidotic patients have a right shift and lots of our patients are acidotic. In a right shift, the hemoglobin quickly and easily offloads oxygen to the body's tissues very efficiently. And this sounds like a good thing. If you're in septic shock or you got waffled by a tractor trailer and you're bleeding into your abdomen, your tissues are starved for oxygen, hypoperfusion, shock. So it's good that the hemoglobin can offload O2 like a champ. The downside is that oxygen doesn't attach well to the hemoglobin. It requires much more partial pressure of oxygen to get attached to the hemoglobin molecule. This is what we call a decreased affinity for oxygen. You're offloading oxygen quickly and efficiently, but it's harder for the hemoglobin to pick up the oxygen and for the oxygen to attach to the hemoglobin. What oxygen it does have, it just dumps off very quickly. And that is a big supply versus demand problem. And the tissues get hypoxic. Things that cause a right shift are acidosis, big time, hyperthermia is another one, and increased 2,3 DPG. Now, some of you, maybe most of you are going, what the fuck is 2,3 DPG? Don't worry, I said the same thing. To simplify it to basic words that even I can understand, it's a chemical that has to do with the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin. Go figure. It can be increased in response to hypoxia. Also, 2,3-DPG can be destroyed during blood banking. Look up storage lesion if you're really bored. If you give someone a lot of banked blood, which happens in trauma, you can reduce the amount of 2,3-DPG that they have and shift the curve to the right. Let's look at a left shift of the curve. This has the opposite effect of the hemoglobin oxygen relationship. It is much easier in a left shift for oxygen to bind to hemoglobin. Yay! Good! Bad part is that the hemoglobin doesn't want to offload the oxygen. It wants to hold on to it. So the tissues get starved for oxygen. Things that cause a left shift are alkalosis, decreased 2,3 DPG, hypothermia, methhemoglobinemia, carbon monoxide, and just for fun, fetal hemoglobin has a high affinity for oxygen. So those parasitic little creatures have a left shift. With some definite exceptions, 
the patients that we encounter pre-hospital in and critical care transport tend to have right shifts unless we've caused a left shift with hyperventilation or giving bicarb, which is usually stupid to do. Our patients are usually a combination of hypoxic, febrile, acidotic, all things that contribute to a right shift.